The question I'm hearing more often these days from radio hosts like George Nuri of Coast to Coast AM is, Marshall, can you show us proof of Nibiru? And that's a fair question because George has been following our work on the images we've been capturing from a surveillance camera mounted atop the Turrialba volcano in Costa Rica. Since we released our first video, Object of Interest as Seen from the Turrialba Volcano, on February 11th, 2013. The reason why I get these questions is what these hosts are getting in terms of pushback from self-appointed debunkers. So what are the debunkers saying? It's the planet Venus, as shown here in a recent early morning observation. Or that it's a sun dog, a scientific term for a bright circular spot or solar halo beside the sun. Then there are the more technical explanations that deal with camera aberrations, such as It's a reflection caused by a camera lens coating. Or, it's a lens flare caused by an internal reflection within the lens due to light being scattered by manufacturing inconsistencies in the lens itself. And finally, it's light bouncing off the front of the lens and onto the back of the outdoor camera housing window. So how do these debunkers come up with these scientific sounding explanations? First, foremost and always, they ignore the evidence and quickly pick up a megaphone. Their goal is not to study the data on its own merits, but rather to shout down whoever is presenting it in any way possible. Few people ever verify the claims made by debunkers, because debunkers know what's really going on for most of you out there, that you can't handle the truth. But that's changing, because we're seeing more of you out there becoming good cynics. You're not going to let some jerk with a megaphone stampede you, nor Will you buy into any claim or representation that you have not personally verified? Considering that we have captured hundreds of images of Nibiru from the Turrialba feed, we are glad to see you out there because everyone loves a good cynic. That's why in this program we'll debunk the debunkers with a fair examination of their claims for both natural observations and camera aberrations. And for those of you who may be concerned about what that means for you and what you can do next, no worries. We've got good news for you. So let's get started. A popular term in the public lexicon these days is sundogs, and this started back in 2003 when paid disinformationalists learned that the poor resolution and imaging systems of these early camera cell phones could be used to create bogus sundog images. They then used social programming to make the term sundog a trigger word, so that when folks hear it, their brains stop working. This social programming campaign ended after Apple brought out the first iPhone in 2007 due to the superior imaging capabilities of modern smartphones. However, the social programming trigger was already well entrenched by that time. 
So with that in mind, let's compare actual sun dogs with actual images from Turrialba. Here you see an actual sun dog to the left and to the right, images from three different surveillance camera systems at Turrialba. Sun dogs are natural observations, which means you can see what your camera sees. As you look at this series of sun dog images, compare them with the Turrialba images, and you'll see no evidence of sun dogs. However, this fact has never stopped debunkers and paid disinformationalists from using this powerful social programming trigger phrase. Still the same, you can see the difference with your own eyes. Another popular natural observation debunking claim is it's Venus. Here you see a recent observation of the planet Venus. Venus is used as the most frequent debunking tactic to rationalize away the object we're observing at Turrialba, which happens to be Nibiru. This feed capture from January of this year is from the third camera system installed at Turrialba. Here you see Nibiru. But is it Venus or is it Nibiru? If you're a debunker or a paid disinformationalist, we already know what your answer will be. However, for you good cynics out there, here is all the information you need to vet our observation. To the left, you see the time zone, elevation, and coordinates. And in the upper left-hand corner of every image displayed on the Turrialba feed is a date and time stamp. Now, always remember, you're looking out to the west. So, to vet this observation, enter the data into a sky program such as Stellarium, and here is what you'll see. That Venus is not in the field of view. And in fact, you can perform this same test with every Turrialba feed image of Nibiru we've ever posted. So, if we're mistaking Nibiru for Venus, our own government, let alone any honest fifth grader, could have easily debunked us. But that is not how our government responded. On June 8, 2014, we released our video, Planet X 101, Nibiru Nearing. And on June 12, the United States government responded. They had the camera at Turrialba pointed downward at the ground so that we could no longer use the feed to observe Nibiru. This is not truth, folks. It's just simple, heavy-handed suppression. If you want to understand the full scope of this deception and why these disinformation tactics are being employed, please read our article, It's Time to Look Up, at yowza.com, Y-O-W-U-S-A.com. With that in mind, let's move on to the next debunking category, Camera Aberrations. Camera aberrations are what the term implies, and unlike natural observations, these are image anomalies created by your camera. At the beginning of this program, we mentioned the three camera aberrations debunkers and paid disinformationalists use to dismiss our Nibiru observations. It's a reflection caused by a camera lens coating. It's a lens flare caused by an internal reflection. And it's light bouncing off the front of the lens and onto the backside of the camera housing window. Since this is the most creative of the lot, let's start with that by taking a quick look at the relevant outdoor surveillance camera components. Here is an example of a typical outdoor surveillance camera and its weatherproof housing. So let's strip it down to its bare components to see what's relevant. Here we begin with a camera body, to which we now add a lens. Unlike film cameras, 
digital cameras use an imaging sensor located just behind the lens mount to capture the image. So now that we have a complete camera, we need to protect it from the elements. That starts with a sealed weatherproof housing. And in front of this housing is a window for the camera lens. Now here is a key concept. No matter what kind of camera aberration we're talking about, it's going to happen within a few inches of the imaging sensor. Anything beyond the camera housing window will be a natural object. In terms of what we see at Turrialba, this is typically going to be clouds and heavenly objects such as the Sun and Nibiru. Therefore, the important thing to remember is that digital cameras such as the outdoor surveillance camera at Turrialba can produce images with both natural objects as well as camera aberrations. So the trick becomes one of separating the real objects from the aberrations. And if you have a series of images, this can be done very easily with movement. Here we have a series of observation images recently submitted to us which turned out to be an excellent example of a lens flare and how it can be identified because of its random movements. It's why I call lens flares hoochie coochie dancers because they just dance around everywhere. In our video titled Planet X System Observations and Orbital Analysis published on July 28, 2013, we presented a superb example of how Nibiru moves naturally through the sky. Here you see to the left of the Sun is Nibiru, or what we used to call Blue Bonnet. Notice how it moves steadily through the sky as natural objects do while it closes with the cloud bank. Now remember, all camera aberrations happen within a few inches of the imaging sensor in the camera which is installed just behind the lens mount. And what you see now is Nibiru slipping behind the clouds. It is also very important to note that Nibiru disappears behind the clouds while the sun is still in full view. Had it been an aberration, it would have remained in view with the sun. Obviously, the advantage of using a consecutive series of images to determine if your object of interest is natural or not is the best way to go. Yet, in most cases, we only have one image to work with, or just a limited series. In this case, we at Yowza.com have developed an analysis method for studying just these kinds of digital images. We first explained a key element of a method we call Camera Sensor Illumination, or CSI, in a video we released on April 19, 2013, titled Blue Kachina and its Moon. Unlike film, which is a single substrate, digital image sensors are like a tiled wall, all contributing to a single image. Consequently, we found that natural objects that generate their own light will also cause what we call foreground illumination of the atmosphere in front of them inside the image sensors that captured their presence. This became the basis for a complete camera sensor illumination method we presented on July 28, 2013 in our video titled Planet X System Observations and Orbital Analysis. In that video we show two attributes of natural objects when imaged with digital cameras. First, they evidence foreground illumination and second, they offer crisp, well-defined image details. Consequently, we refer to them as hot objects. Aberrations, on the other hand, we refer to as cold objects because they lack foreground illumination and evidence fuzzy edges. In reviewing our images of Nibiru, captured with the Turrialba surveillance cameras, 
we have always seen a consistent pattern of hot objects. Likewise, Nibiru moves in a natural manner in these feed captures, and as you saw before, it slipped behind a cloud bank at sunset while the sun was still in full view. So, are we asking you to believe that the images we have been reporting for all this time are in fact Nibiru? No. What we are asking you to do is to be a good cynic. If you are new to this topic, you're no doubt wondering how much time you will need to invest to gain a mastery of it. Unfortunately, with so much disinformation out there to sort through, it can take as much as three years to gain a satisfying mastery of the topic. This is why we created the Planet X 101 series. The first four episodes in this series literally compress three years of independent study into just three hours of instruction. Complete these four episodes and you will have a satisfying mastery of the topic. Who, what, when, where, why, and how is the best place to start because it is designed to give you a solid foundation upon which you can build from. From there, Deep Impact shows you the most immediate concern with a Planet X system flyby namely a deep impact event that will devastate coastal cities with a massive wall of water, such as that depicted in the movie Deep Impact. Then you'll be ready for Nibiru Nearing. This is the episode that prompted the United States government to render the surveillance camera feed at Turialba useless for the purpose of observing Nibiru. And then you'll be ready for the next video pole shift, and the big what-if question, how will it happen? Also in this video, you'll see documented proof that our government has in fact admitted to the existence of Planet X and that we live in a binary star system. Once you've completed this series of instruction, you'll be ready to take action. If you're ready to become a part of the solution, visit yowza.com, that's Y-O-W-U-S-A.com, and read It's Time to Look Up. In that article, we ask you to begin looking up at the sky, and we show you how to make a verifiable observation report. The rules are simple. You must make a naked eye observation, sending us a picture your friend took, or something that you found after looking at an image you had captured with your camera is of no value to us. Next, send us the raw image file from the camera and please note it needs to have a minimum resolution of 8 megapixels in order for us to conduct a proper camera sensor illumination analysis. And most importantly, you must come forward we do not publish anonymous reports. You must give us a telephonic interview to explain what you have observed and then give us your permission to publish that interview along with your real name and the city or general location in which you made the observation. So if you feel that you've seen Nibiru in the sky, contact us at info at yowza.com with your report. And remember, you must look before sunset and to the west. And I'll leave it on that note. So until the next time we meet, remember Marshall's motto. Destiny comes to those who listen and fate finds the rest. So learn what you can learn, do what you can do, and never give up hope. This is Marshall, and I'll catch you on the backside.